Welcome to our online version of worship with the Lutheran Church of Del Rapids on this sixth Sunday of Easter. It is also today uh, Mother's Day and we celebrate uh, mothers and love for our families that they give to us. And it is also we are celebrating 19 of our very own high school graduates here in Del Rapids, uh, offering a milestone to them of a blanket uh, that has been handmade by members of our congregation and sending them off um, as they commence uh, a new life post high school uh, to send them with the blessing of our congregation uh, we've supported them along the way. It is also next Sunday going to be for us receiving gifts uh, from our members and from any of you that would like to help with our Go Live media appeal. Our hope is that um, we raise enough funds to be able to buy the equipment and uh, put on a part-time staff who will help us not have to record these services and the time uh, that that takes uh, in advance, but to be able to live broadcast uh, all of our services beginning sometime this summer and to bring this worship service to you live in that way on Sunday mornings. It's also the beginning next week um, or this week, I'm sorry, that worship at our congregation in the Lutheran Church of Del Rapids will be one service at 9.30 on Sunday mornings instead of the two and uh, return to the other schedule next fall. Glad that you're with, with us. Uh, welcome to worship. Happy Mother's Day. Glad to have you with us for worship again today. Let us begin with the sharing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. We continue our worship with the thanksgiving for baptism. In the waters of baptism, we are once and forever made children of God. God redeems us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. In these waters, we are drawn into God's community, joined together in God's mission for the sake of the world. For life, for community, for getting in on what matters most in life, thanks be to God. Amen. One, two, three, four. We are called, we are claimed, we are loved by the holy name. We are healed, we are whole. The Savior ransomed my soul. We're singing glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, ah, oh, glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, Gloria, we are here to proclaim God is here, calls us each by name. We are here to give praise. The love of God will not change. We're singing glory, 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 alleluia. Glory, Gloria, oh, glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, ah. we're singing glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, ah. oh, glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, ah. let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Holy Gospel for the sixth Sunday of Easter, and for us uh, celebrating also baccalaureate and commencement of our high school seniors, is from John, the 15th chapter, verses 12 through 20b and 26, 27. 
Jesus says this to us. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belonged to the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. When the advocate, the spirit, comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. This is the word of our Lord. Our message today for our congregation, for those of you who are joining us online, is aimed right at our graduating seniors. And I encourage everyone else, this is also for you, um, listen in. These 19 graduating high school seniors uh, are the first senior class at the Lutheran Church of Del Rapids that I was privileged to have all the way uh, through confirmation. They're, they're my kids, uh, even though that seems uh, forever ago. So, uh, young men and women, as you commence, as you begin the next new chapter in your young adult lives, you have big, important choices to make every day. You have more choices and sometimes more difficult choices to make than when I was a graduating senior heading out of my parents' and family home and into an adult world. My own kids... Um, who are now both college age. Jory's a freshman and Anna graduates in a couple weeks from Augustana. They have asked me um, about choices that I made back then. And one of those questions was, um, Dad, when you were our age, did you do drugs? <laughs> I told them, I said, and I was honest, I said, you know, it was a different world when I was your age. And in the little rural town that I grew up in years ago, I honestly had never even heard of drugs used by kids in our town. It wasn't an option. Um, it wasn't a choice even available that I knew of at the time. Alcohol, yes. And other kinds of self-destructive trouble, yes. We had those choices to make, but not drugs back then. Well, your choices, there are more of them for you and they are more difficult than I and maybe your parents faced when we were your age. You have choices in these days and in coming years that some of them for you will feel like this is no big deal, it won't hurt me, but it will. You have other choices that already I, I, I think feel like for you um, this is too big for me to decide right now, too difficult, because this affects the rest of my life and I'm not ready to make that choice. Yes, those choices are huge for you, but I, I want you to know this. You do have time. You're 18. You can and you probably will change your mind, change your course several times before you finally settle into those choices for your adult life. Choices, where things like the use of alcohol and drugs are important 
and the wrong choices will hurt you badly. Other choices that some in this world that you are entering will label as moral choices, your life's values. Other choices of what you will do, of who you will become, like your college major, your career choice, your life partner, where you will live. If you haven't made those important choices yet, they lie ahead of you. And they will be, those choices, life-defining. But I also need to say to you that as you now commence your young adult lives, you have even bigger choices, even bigger, much bigger choices to make in these next years that will frame all of those other choices that are before you. And in ways that you may not be well aware of and those choices that you will have loud, demanding, competing voices trying to make those choices for you. Those voices wanting to make those choices for you and also more demanding and louder than they were when I was your age. I don't think that it's ever been more difficult for young people heading out into your young adult lives than it is for you today. Because those demanding voices, those competing voices, they are today like an echo chamber, rattling around on social media, banging around in our politics, from our news feeds, our world on edge, angry, suspicious, distrustful of one another. That world then laying claim to us and demanding. That world's claim of us, well, we join that clamoring and that ugly voice of this world. That, that world will say to us, be hateful with us. That world will say, you too, assert your rights even if it destroys someone else to do so. That world lay, will lay claim to you saying, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog out there, world out there, so do what it takes to be top dog even if your neighbor gets hurt when you do so. That world's claim of you will say, if you're going to succeed in this world, then it's a zero-sum proposition that somebody else must fail in order for you to succeed, so go for it. That world will say to you, young people these days don't live in a real world and that your idealism and your values don't count for anything. That's what that world will say to you. But as your pastor today, this voice, my voice, is saying to you instead, as you make the big choices today about who you will be in a world that will demand of you otherwise, you do have the very real option and you do have the ability to choose to be who you are. Who you are because you are a child of God you are not a child of that world. And, to, and for you to choose to live instead and to love one another and the world that God has made, giving, you, you, giving your life to do so in the way of Jesus. That's the big choice before you as you commence today that will for the rest of your life frame all of those other big, important, and difficult choices that lie before you. And that, that is the one big moral choice. It really is a moral choice that will shape and determine every other moral choice that you make going forward from today. And then guess what? Jesus in the gospel, in the scripture from John 15, that's appointed for today, which is your baccalaureate service today, Jesus also has something to say to you about those choices. And that's this. Jesus tells us, he says, this is my commandment for you, as you make your life's choices, that you love one another as I have loved you. You love one another as I have loved you. What does Jesus mean by love one another? 
He says, no one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. That's the love of Jesus. To lay down one's life for one's friends. What does that mean? It means that contrary to what this world will tell you, your life, if you will love one another as Jesus commands, is not primarily about you. It's not all about you. That what Jesus commands of us instead is to follow in the way and to live our lives as he did. As he did. Setting aside ourselves as number one, that we're not the center of the universe for the sake of the other for whom we lay down our lives for their welfare instead. That's who you are as a child of God. That's who you are, claimed by God and called to love in the way of Jesus. But you know this, that even and if when you begin to make life's choices of loving one another in that way, there are other voices of this world that will cry, foul, those voices will, and they'll demand that you join those voices in their way of treating one another differently instead. Jesus here has something to say about that as well. When Jesus followed the command to love one another by laying down our lives as he did, Jesus said this, if the world hates you for those choices, he said, be aware that the world hated me before it hated you. For what did that world do to Jesus when he loved the neighbor that that world despised? What did the world do to Jesus when he ate with sinners? What did that world do to Jesus when he called the tax collector to join him, when he touched the leper, when he defended and forgave the prostitute? That world hung Jesus on a cross to die, to silence him, to tell the rest of the world that such idealistic craziness like this Jesus isn't and cannot be the way of the real world. That's what that world did. That world hated Jesus and made its point by crucifying him. As Jesus says, it will hate, it will challenge you as well if you follow in his way. But, says Jesus, you do not belong to that world. If you did belong to that world, he said, that world would love you as its own. You're like us. But you do not belong to that world, says Jesus. You belong to me. Because I have chosen you out of that world, which is why, therefore, when you love one another as I have loved you, that world will despise you. Seniors and all, these are the choices before us that define who we are. And they define who we are, they do so by acknowledging whose we are. Whose we are, chosen and claimed and shaped by God's claim as his beloved children belonging to God. As Jesus here ends these words to us in John 15 by saying, when the Spirit comes, you are to testify. You are to testify, meaning you are to speak up. You're to lay claim to who you are. By, by what you say and what you do, by how you lay down your life for the sake of one another. In the same love, Jesus says, that I have given you. Why? Says Jesus, because you are mine. Because I have chosen you out of this world, says Jesus, because you have been with me, with me from the very beginning. Seniors and all, baptized children of God, who from your beginning in baptism where God laid claim saying you belong to him, you have belonged not to this world and its voices. But you have belonged to Jesus. 
And Jesus says to you, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And as you make these critically important life choices, I'm giving you this command. Love one another as I have loved you. Thanks be to God. Amen. of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. each other as sisters and brothers united in love we are called to act with justice we are called to love tenderly we are called to serve one another to walk humbly with God and blindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. With the whole church, let us confess together our Christian faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Please join us as we pray. Oh God, as your son Jesus has loved us, laying down his very life for us, 
may we so in turn love one another. God, when a world that does not know love lays claim to us and demands otherwise of us, remind us, we pray, call us back to you that we do not belong to that hostile and hateful world, but that rather in our baptism, from the very beginning we have been with and belong to you. God, we pray bless these high school graduates of ours as they complete this phase of their young lives and they commence another. Walk with them every day, we pray. Hover over them in their every choice that comes their way. Protect them. Keep them. Call them to choices. To choices where they lead a life that they know they are loved by you and given to loving their neighbor. We pray, O oh God, for those among us who this day are ill, who are grieving, who are alone or afraid. Heal them. Give them comfort, we pray. For those that we have named among us in our worship folder as they've risen among us, and those, O oh God, the names, the people, their needs, that we now lift quietly to you. We pray in thanksgiving, O oh God, for our partners in Christian ministry, for the food pantry here in Del Rapids and those it serves, for Church on the Street and the St. Dismas Prison Congregation and the banquet and their work in Sioux Falls, for the Two Strike and Pine Ridge Ministries in South Dakota, for our friends at the Lutheran Church of Faith and Hope in Nicaragua, and for all of the work and all of the people of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, of which we are privileged to be a part. May everything that we do, may all that we say, may the work of our hands, O oh God, be in praise of you. And to your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now to that time in the service when you may want to prepare yourselves for Holy Communion. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May this great gift, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in faith unto eternal life. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us join in praying together the, Lord, the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's go.
go out into the world and make it a loving place to live. Let's go out into the world and tell everyone the Savior lives. Let's go out, let's go out and make it a loving place to live. Let's go out, let's go out and tell everyone the Savior lives. Let's go out. Let's go out into the world and make it a loving place to live. Let's go out into the world and tell everyone the Savior lives. Let's go out, let's go out and make it a loving place to live. Let's go out, let's go out and tell everyone the Savior lives. Let's go out. As we conclude our worship, go in peace. Love like Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen.